All right, welcome everybody. And uh, I wanted to add one more lesson here on, on working with some information from a database and getting it into our app. So far we've had a, a lot of success in if we had one thing that we grabbed from our database and putting it in, or if we wanted to have like a drop down menu. But uh, one thing we're often gonna want is to say grab everything or, or a selection of things from our database and show it off in our app. So. Uh, I want to look at how to do that because it's it's not as intuitive as you might think. Uh, first thing I need to do is grab some data here. So I'm just going to grab, um, oh, let's say the 100 birds of the world. And I'm going to import that into my, my new app here. So if I go look at it, you can see here we've got uh, 100 birds. And they've got all their names. They've got scientific names. They're what they eat. Where are some pictures and such. So let's say that I wanted to see all of the birds in my database or maybe a large selection of them and what all of them ate or perhaps i wanted to later on search and find all of the birds that ate fish and then display all of those uh, at least some some large selection of things so i've got the the database in here and i'm going to go on to my my design and show off um, a, a large text area where I'm gonna display a bunch of information. Uh, the dropdown would work great if I just wanted to see all of one column, but I actually want the name of the bird and what they eat together. So I need to print that out somehow. Uh, a label's not gonna be great because that's a one, a one shot, one piece of information. So we're gonna be looking at using a text area. So if I grab this text area and bring it over, this is just like you might expect, uh, a large volume of text that you can type in and have as many lines as you like um, to be able to type almost like a, a word processing field here. Um, and what I wanna do is display all of the birds and that information. Uh, let's give this a better name here. We'll call this bird info or something like that. Um, so uh, I've got the data in my database. I've got this text field where I want all the names of the bird and what they eat to appear. So now let's let's join those two. And uh, we do that obviously in our data set or our data tab where we can get a bunch of information. Again, if I only wanted say a list of all of the birds, that get column works really, really well. That will get every one of them and return it as a list, which is kind of nice but I, I, I don't wanna get that column and then get the what they eat column and put them somehow side by side, that is gonna get a little ugly. So we're, we're gonna to have to use this read records, which we have done before. And let's grab it like so. Um, and I wanna read the records from the 100 birds of the world. This is, of course, going to grab all of the birds, but if I wanted to filter, say, only birds that had a particular name or only birds that ate fish, we could we could make a JavaScript object and do that there. But um, in this case, we're we're gonna I'm gonna grab all of them. Uh, and if I were to just run this, let's see this program here, I'm gonna get yeah, just like that. There's all 100 birds, but they're all undefined, and that's because my title is incorrect should be capital N name. So if you get that undefined, generally that's because you've made some error here. It's grabbing a piece of information that doesn't exist. Uh, and if I run that now, there we go. I can get all 100 birds. I get all of their names. Oh, I've done their ID and their name. I, I could also add in say the diet here, but I actually don't care about their ID. So I'll tell you what, to save me some effort here, I'm gonna change that one to name. And then there's the, the software is gonna add in a colon and then I could put in their diet, which was another column heading here. And if I reset and run that, there you go. We've got the American goldfinch, it eats seeds and insects, the American purple gallinule, it eats frogs, seeds, leaves and fish, all the way down to the yellow, yellow bellied sapsucker, which eats tree, sap, fruit, and insects. Perfect. However, it's in the debug console, which is not very useful for my app. I want it over here. So we may be inclined because we know how to change the text. If I just go set text uh, and I were to say, grab that and drop it in there, I could set the text for my bird info. 
right? That was going to be in here. And right now it says text. And if I were to run this, uh, that's going to appear as text because that's what I said. Uh, but actually, I want all of that information in there. So uh, the easiest thought I would have would be to grab all of that records there. I don't need the console log. Let's get rid of that. And I'm just going to print out the name, colon, diet of the birds all in here. Uh, we're going to be happy. And it's just that easy, except it's not. And you will notice that I only, for some reason, get the yellow-bellied sapsucker, which eats tree sap, fruit, and insects. And I remember that was in the list, but where's all of the other birds? Well, you got to keep in mind what's going on here in this for loop. What's happening is it reads all of the records, brings them in, and then goes through each one of them using this for loop. So I becomes zero at the beginning, so that's going to be my very first bird. And if you think what's going to happen here is it's going to set the text bird info to the name of the first bird, colon, diet of the first bird. The loop then goes around and says, okay, we increase by one, and then I go down, and so now I'm on the second bird. And it's going to set the text for this field to be the name of the second bird and the diet for the second bird. And it's going to go through a hundred times, setting the text and basically overwriting whatever was there before. It's changing all of the text um, so that this happens. You actually did get to see all 100 birds, but it happens so quickly that all you actually end up seeing is the last bird that was left. Uh, it's happening so fast that you can't see that. If we were to slow it down somehow, uh, that for loop and put a little pause in there, you would see each bird appear in turn. And that's not really what I want to do. I want all of the birds to be displayed here in one big chunk of text. So using this uh, for loop runs into a bit of a problem. And unfortunately, there's there's no easy way at the moment to add the um, add another line. Um, as we go through this for loop. There's lots of different ways of tackling this. I just want to show you what I think is probably the, the fastest and easiest way here. Uh, so rather than think of this as a bunch of discrete items that are getting popped in here, I want to turn it into a collection. So I'm going to create a list. I can do that with a variable I think easiest. I'm going to do that right up top here. So I'm going to say um, the raw data is equal to this little blank list, which we've, we've done before. Um, so now I've got a variable that can kind of act as a way of grabbing each piece of information as it goes around. And you may remember from our lists that we have the ability to add things to a list. So right now I have an empty list. And what I would like to do is as we go through each record, as it is, it comes in here, I'm going to append to raw data. I'm going to add on to that empty list here this stuff, the name and the diet that has come in from here. I can then at the end, <clears throat> outside of that loop, Basically, though, it's gone through. Now all of 100 things are going to get added onto that list. And if I then set the bird info to raw data, let's see what happens there. And if we run and reset it, oh, there we go. Uh, you can see now, now it has built this giant list, uh, print it, printed it all out here for me. We do get a little error in here, even though it worked. It says it's not a UI string, so it's not a, it's not supposed to be a bunch of text. It's actually a list which is being set to text. Fortunately, um, code.org is, is letting this happen. It may, it does run into a bit of error, but it also looks really, really ugly. So I, I want to do take one more step here because all of that info is there, but you can see American goldfinch seeds, American and insects, American purple galanu, frogs, things. It's just all mushed together as a bit because it's just added it to the collection. So we have another feature uh, for lists 
which is really, really powerful. Um, the ability to join items in a list in a slightly different way other than just uh, a giant list with a bunch of commas in between. So I am going to make a, a new variable here just before I did it. I've built all that information, but I'm going to call this, instead of raw data, I'm going to call this formatted data. And what I want to do is use this join feature. Uh, and what, what it does is it takes a list and then joins all the items using something that you get to decide. In this case, it's a, a hyphen, uh, but we're going to change it to something even nicer. But let's see what the hyphen looks like. So the formatted data is going to be the raw data list, this list that's just a big mashup of everything. And it's going to join each thing that's separated by a comma, and it's going to change that into a little hyphen. Uh, so now, when we print it out, we're going to print out the formatted data. And if I now run this, we can see it still looks pretty mu me messy, but you can see here we got the American goldfinch, seeds, insects, hyphen, American purple galanu, frogs, seeds, leaves and fish, hyphen, the American red start, flying insects. So every item is now separated by a little hyphen, which doesn't really help me visually. It's not quite as nice, but we can do this with anything. I could put uh, hyphen space, 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 and reset that. And you can see we get this hyphen space, 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 space. Makes a little cleaner look there. Um, you could put a word in here, you could put anything, but in this case, what I'm going to do is put a backslash n. And the backslash n in, uh, in JavaScript is signed for a new line. It's the slash new line character. Uh, so this is like same as hitting enter on your keyboard. It basically moves down to the next line. Um, if I do it now, it's now kind of mushed them a little bit better. Oh, I can see American goldfish, seeds and insects, and then it moves to the next one. Um, now, some of these spread out onto several lines, so it's still not as clean as possible. Uh, but what I could do is put a second new line character in there, two new lines to create a little extra space, um, or three, or whatever you wanted. We could put bullets, we could put a hyphen, and then in the new line, uh, all sorts of stuff that you wanted to do there. You could do there to make it look exactly how you want. But if I now refresh it, ah, you can see we get this big empty space, which was my second new line. The first one just brings us down. And now my information is way more organized, much nicer to see um, because every single item has been displayed with a big gap between it, meaning that I can see that that Arctic Tern eats fish and crustaceans and that a bald eagle fish small mammals and birds, very, very clear. Uh, the text entry field automatically gives me a little scroll bar, and we can see now at the very end that yellow belly sap sucker. Uh, but this is a way better way of grabbing a whole bunch of information using that read records, um, putting it into a list, splitting up that list into a nice, easy, readable format, and then I can display it into that. I also don't get this, um, this uh, error anymore because the join feature actually turns it into a what we call a UI string or a string here. It's no longer technically a list. It's now a whole bunch of information that has been displayed nicely. So hopefully you can use that technique if you have a lot of um, a lot of data coming out of a, of a table or out of a database that you would like to display nicely. You can use that, build a list out of it. Uh, format the list in a way that is more appeasing to you, and then you can use that set text feature on a a large piece of uh, a, a large uh, what am I thinking here text area on the app lab. So go forth and build something beautiful.